All right, I'm gonna show you one method, one of many methods that you could use to inject oil. In this case, let's say somebody can only afford the little small containers of UV dye, because they don't do a lot of refrigerant. I usually get eight ounce or 32 ounce bottles of UV dye and I already pre-poured it in here. But let's say you can only afford your do-it-yourself or at home or a very small shop who only does a AC once in a while. This you should be able to afford. These are about $35, Fleabay or Amazon. And they already have the graduated cylinders on the side showing you exactly how much goes in here in milliliters or ounces. So you have no excuse of saying you didn't know. When you buy an OEM Toyota condenser, like this one right here, it has a brand new condenser in it. And you can see I recovered this one earlier this month because that's my sticker back there. And I have the month, I have the year, but I don't have the day on there because I didn't finish recovering yet. I was just called back to recover it. And as you can see, this is one of the Toyotas that have that little spring clip made out of plastic that breaks all the time. Now this shop, oops, and many others have had problems with those leaking before. And this particular shop, he will no longer buy aftermarket condensers for these Toyotas with that uh, plastic spring on it because that's almost a thousand dollar mistake when it leaks or it breaks on the technician and it pops out later and loses the refrigerant. So this shop, even though they are a direct, they will not buy the cheap aftermarket condensers that have that plastic spring clip. So this OEM condenser from Toyota comes with the right oil for this compressor, and this is YF refrigerant. You see right here, 450 grams of YF refrigerant. This is the compressor manufacturer's OEM refrigerant oil, and it comes with the exact, see there's 40, 40 milliliters. So this manufacturer, when you change this condenser, they give you the 40 milliliters of refrigerant oil, comes in the box. The new little clip, for the condenser that breaks all the time comes in the box and new o-rings for the line come in the box when you buy aftermarket condensers you're screwed they give you none of that and if you try to buy all this individually you'll find out let me open this up really tight it's in a metal container because refrigerant oil absorbs moisture through plastic let me get this stuff out of the way See if I could pop that off with one hand. Yes, I can. So that is dry. It's purged with nitrogen. There's no air in there. I'm gonna pour it into here. And there we go. We got 40 milliliters in there. The manufacturer of the compressor, this is their oil. This is their viscosity. This has the corrosion additives and load bearing additives. For this manufacturer, what they recommend, you will not get that if you buy an aftermarket condenser. And let's say you're a do-it-yourselfer. Okay, so this is about $35. I think I mentioned that earlier. And I cannot do this one-handed. Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to put the phone down. And let's see here if I can put the phone down in an area. Well, sorry. You just might not get to see this unless I can, ah, I can do this. There we go. Can you see that? Okay. So that just threads on. It has an O-ring seal, but there's a little air trapped in the top. So let's uh, get that air out of there because there's a little space of air. So let's take this off of here. And let's say you're a do-it-yourself person and you don't have a lot of money, so you cannot afford to buy two of these. Let's say you only could afford to buy one and the one is already on your gauges performing the vacuum. Now, I just happen to have this under a vacuum right now because I was starting this and I just decided to make this video after. So let's, uh, let's purge out the air. So now there's a little bit of air stuck inside this hose and this other the chamber. So let's purge that out. So I hold it upright and we're gonna purge it until we see, you see the little bubbles there in the top of coming out? That's the air coming out. We're holding it perfect, perfectly upright and we are turning it and we're driving the piston up, pushing the oil up and pushing the air up. 
And so we're gonna drive this up until we see solid liquid coming out. And when we see liquid coming out, we know we got all the air out. Because my system is under a vacuum, the vacuum pump is on it. Like I said, I started this video after I decided uh, to make this video. I started my pump. Okay, I'm still turning. There we go. Did you see that? That's just, there we go. We got no more air. We just got liquid. And now that's going to make a, could make a little bit of a mess. Now, like I said before, this is geared kind of towards do-it-yourself guy who just does a little bit. He's a backyard mechanic. You don't have a lot of money to buy the really expensive die and I'm trying to do this again with one hand well I need to put this down of course a do-it-yourselfer will not have this vacuum pump but they'll have a vacuum pump hopefully so let's uh kill the vacuum on the slow side because we're going to inject this oil right here on the low side we're unscrewing this so we're not depressed because we're going to inject the oil right down through here. All right. And because this is open, it doesn't suck air in because this is at uh, 120 microns. So let's get this and let's hook it up. Okay, so we're now hooked up. So now grab it, turn it upright, and I'm one handing this so it's not going too smoothly. Now you see as I go down here, I'm depressing the valve. So now I can inject the oil in. So now you can see the graduated marks here. Let's see if it'll focus. There you go. And can I turn that with one hand? No, I cannot. So let's see if I can support this again. Looks like we're not gonna have too much luck. Maybe. Right about here, there we go. So I think you're in focus, I can't see because I have my foam propped in one of the openings of the hood but basically all I'm doing is screwing it down and it's putting in the UV dye that I already had inside there plus Toyota's OEM Denso ND12 refrigerant oil that was meant to use with the YF refrigerant and this variable displacement compressor then I'm coming over here, I think it's out of your light, and I'm unscrewing, I'm backing up the fitting so it doesn't suck in air so I could take this off. So now, the system has dye in it. Get that out of the way. I'm gonna hook this back up. I don't think you might be out of your uh, eyesight there. I'll grab the camera in a minute, show you what I did. Let's come back here again. And there we go, focus. All right, so now I'm hooked up, but I did not turn this in because this is now filled with air. I don't want that air inside there. So let's get that air out of there. And as you see, we were at 128, now we're at 311. The little bit of air that was ingrained in the, like, in the refrigerant oil, a little bit of moisture from me opening it up to the air, the dye and a little tiny like drop of air space in there even though it's reading it all the way over here on the high side it could pick up the air that was injected in the low side and as you see it's going back down slowly but we want to get the air out of this line we do not want to open that up and have it suck air into the system a lot of air this is all air so we're going to close the high side And so now it's just evacuating the center of the manifold because the micron gauge is located in the center in between these two points of the shutoff cell. So we're now that's why we're down to 15 microns. 
Now we're going to open up to the low side that is not on over there and we're going to evacuate out the hose because we don't want any air in the hose. And as you see how fast that goes, it goes right down really fast. Okay, so now we have the air out of the hose and if I leave it there long enough, it'll get down to oh, 30, 40 microns. And uh, my hose already fairly well dry. Okay, so now we know we do not have a contaminated system with air in it anymore. So now I could open it back up here to the high side and we continue evacuating. And depending on how your line is shaped, so this line goes, it has an upward slope right here, not a downward slope. So that means the oil I put in, here's a downward slope, and then it goes, it goes up again. So that means the oil is trapped right here. I would not want to turn this fitting back in and suck oil back up because this is all loaded up with oil. Now, if this fitting right here was located right here, all the oil I would have injected would have poured all the way down and went down. But it's not right there. It's made in an oil trap right here. So that means I have pure oil here. And if I open this up, my vacuum pump will want to pull out. So you wouldn't want to do that. So what you do, well, a do-it-yourselfer can't do this because you don't have nitrogen. But I would hook up my nitrogen right here and I turn it up to like a little 200 PSI blast of nitrogen that's in here to here just for a second and then turn it back off and I'd have the nitrogen trapped in these two hoses but turned off at the vacuum tank and I'd simply just screw this down and what would happen is as soon as it depresses the valve core that high pressure nitrogen would just blast straight into this tube and because the rest of the system's under the vacuum it would push this oil from the center and it would push some of the oil this way, blasting it towards the compressor and it would blast some of it backwards and it would com completely clear out this section of tube and there would not be oil in this little oil trap that is located at the low side down here because this is high, this is high, so the oil when you put it in there has nowhere to go. So it would clear that back out. So when I screw this back down, it will not suck up oil. And the only other thing you can do on this same, sometimes you have these flexible lines. This is not a flexible line. Well, it's flexible here, but it's not flexible back there. There's no hose. Sometimes you could get these lines and you can dismount them and you can push them down a little bit because they have hose on both ends and you can tilt it so the oil pours out, but we can't do it in this case. So that stays like that. And you could just leave it. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, you don't have nitrogen. No, you don't use shop air. Shop air contains a lot of moisture, and this refrigerant oil is extremely hydroscopic and loves to just suck the moisture right out of shop air. You just leave it on the vacuum pump. And if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you could leave it on the vacuum pump overnight. But that's what I do. do. I've always done that it's on my own vehicles. And there we go. We're getting way back down there again. And we're not pulling out vacuum from the low side because I'm pretending I'm a do-it-yourselfer and I don't have nitrogen to push that through, and I'm gonna do all my vacuum from the high side. Unfortunately, a do-it-yourself person doesn't own a micron gauge. So if you're a do-it-yourself person who does quite a bit of side jobs at home in your backyard, invest in this gauge here. Micron gauge is an extra expense. At least having one micron gauge, even though it's not located in the best possible scenario because for a micron B gauge to give you the correct reading let's say you pull the vacuum from the high side but you put your micron gauge on the low side and you read it over here and that's when you know you would have the true vacuum when the vacuum gets low just connected up with no hoses on it on the low side or the high side and you're pulling through one side when you see that micron gauge reading 100 microns you know the whole entire system is under 100 microns but when you have it up here it'll show a higher number uh, a lower number because the micron gauge is located in here not in the system the system's actually higher 
All right, I hope that's helpful to somebody, but if you are doing it yourself or and you do any number and you want to pick your level up and learn a little more, get a field piece, 48, it's a SM480V uh, refrigerant gauge, and uh, take yourself up the next level. For some of you small shops and do, get the three quarter inch silicone vacuum hose, and they have adapters. You don't have to have a big vacuum pump like this. It could go to uh, smaller vacuum pumps, but get the silicone vacuum line. All right, see you guys.